Can I be Tig? Yes, OK, name. Okay, Kim Foster. Mm -hmm. And address? Melbourne. Thought I'd grab an early lunch, Chrissy. Righto, so long as you finish those stairs today, eh? Hey, Des, is that your ute out the back? Oh, it sure is. Yeah, well, the tyres could do with a transplant. Huh? It's a bit bald. That's my man's a mate of money. Oh, just see what you can do, huh? I'd hate to put you off the road. Hey, listen, I found the perfect present, but I'm still 50 bucks short. Do you guys want to pass the hat around again? Yeah, no worries. It's only an extra 10 each. Right. Would you get me? Not for you. You dealt for Tom Croydon. Constable Tom Croydon. Uh, senior sergeant now. Do you know him? Oh, not really. Do you want to come back with us, catch up with him? No, thanks. Kim Foster. Doesn't ring any bells. How old? Early 30s. An original Australian. She's trying to say Aboriginal. Uh, and she's looking for me. Oh, damn. Oh, hang on. Yeah, yeah. Uh... Parished your mind. Yeah, what, well, we can't have you looking grubby for your ceremony. It's only a service medal. It's no big deal. Hey, 30 years is nothing to be sneezed at, right? It's not as if I've done anything special. I've just hung around longer. Uh, yes, Chris. He's going to be so surprised tonight. We're on our way. He says he's been assaulted. I have been assaulted. Well, look at me. What happened? Dunno. We were chatting away happily. I went out the back to get his sandwich. All hell broke loose and there's blood all over the floor. All right, so who are you, Des? Bloody black bitch. And I want her charged. I'm the bloody victim here. I'm an injured man. I should be getting tea and sympathy. I already explained that, Mr. Blue. We've got to take a statement. PJ? Go for it. There I am peacefully enjoying my lunchtime ale, waiting on my toasted sandwich, when all of a sudden the black bitch just up and king hits me for no reason whatsoever. Well, there must have been some reason. No, out of the blue. Chris Riley said that you were chatting with Ms Foster. Oh, we might have passed the time of day. What you talk about? You know the trouble here, don't you? Those bloody abos can't hold their grog. One sip and they're tropo. Mate, I've been up north, pal. I could tell you stories. Yeah, I'm sure you could, Mr Blewett. But let's just stick to the matter in hand, huh? Absolute and complete racist scumbag. <laughs> Not exactly your poster boy for reconciliation, no. I checked out your Kim Foster on leave. Clean as a whistle. Of course she is. I know exactly what happened. Oh, that's handy. Well, the guy's not only a racist scumbag and a liar, he's also a creepy sleaze bucket who can't keep his hands to himself. How do you know this? Because he tried it on me the other day. Didn't realise I was a copper. Were you wearing that red top? Anyway, I soon set him straight. But if it added some racist insult, I might have been tempted to smack him in the teeth as well. well. Just a suggestion. Maybe we should listen to the facts before we start handing out motivations. Sounds good to me. He suggested that we have sex, to put it nicely. When I said no, he called me something I'd rather not repeat. A racist insult? You bet. Were there any witnesses to this exchange? Well, what do you reckon? Right, no witnesses. Look, I'm sorry I hit him now, okay? Every time I walk into a pub, some low-life gub like him thinks I'm easy meat. I can understand the frustration. Can you? Well, I mean, you've obviously had a frustrating day. Well, I'm sorry. I just saw Red. What's going to happen about this? Mr Blewett, you would be perfectly within your rights to charge Ms Foster with assault. Well, let's do it then. But have you considered that she might counter with an indecent assault charge? What? Or racial vilification? Could make for a very messy court case. Hang on. Especially as I know for a fact there'd be other women prepared to come forward and give evidence about your inappropriate sexual advances. Oh, and this is about the other night, isn't it? How was I supposed to know you were a cop? Des, has it ever occurred to you that no women like that sort of behaviour? And if she can prove provocation, you might find the boot on the other foot. All right. I'm not stupid. I get the message. I'll drop the charges. Good. But don't think I don't know what's going on here. You're only looking after her because she's black, aren't you? Her skin colour is totally irrelevant. Oh, don't give me that. These days the bloody abos get away with murder. So there are no charges against you and you're totally free to go. Thanks. Perhaps uh, next time you see Red, just uh, count to ten first, eh? Yeah. And uh, stay at a desk blue away while you're at the pub. For sure. Uh, otherwise, uh, enjoy your stay in Mount Thomas. Sorry. Oh, that's um, Kim. Uh, Kim. That was her. So I gather. And I can honestly say I've never seen her before in my life. I wonder why she didn't recognise you. Hey, how'd the presentation go? Oh, you know, the usual. Stuffy speeches, plain assorted biscuits, lukewarm tea. Can we see it? It's just a medal. Mm. Hey. Congratulations, boss. Thank mm. you. Do you reckon I'll ever get one of these? Well, not unless you stop gas bagging and get back to work. Right. 
Now, are you sure that's enough? Absolutely. Thanks. Uh, now, uh, what did you end up getting him? Oh, it's an antique mirror. It's fantastic. It's going to look really good above his fireplace. I'm really oh. happy with it. Oh, no, I put it... The money's gone. How much exactly? $550. I told you. Everybody put in and the mirror is $600. Mirror? The, the present. present. What on earth am I going to get him now? I mean, what on earth can I get him for a lousy 50 bucks at this point in time? All right, so the money was in the desk drawer. Well, it was in the safe, but I'd taken it out to get ready to go to the shops before closing. I hadn't even got the wrapping paper or anything. When did you take it out? Only about half an hour ago, you know. I know. I'll get him a bottle of French champagne out of stock and that'll just have to do. That's what right. I can do now. So you took the money out of the safe. Then Jeannie called me to the kitchen. She's in a tiz about the food for tonight. I mean, it's only finger food. How high can it be? But we know what she's okay. like, don't we? So you went into the kitchen. I put the money into the top drawer of the desk and then I left for about ten minutes at the most. Did anyone see you put it there? Well, I don't know. It's mid-afternoon. It was a bit slow. Not a lot of people around. But maybe Des or something. Des? Blew it. He's painting the stairs. From where he would have had a perfect view of Chris's office. It's a mate each to his own and everything, but I don't happen to spend my life perving on Chris Riley. After all, that'd be inappropriate. So you didn't see her take an envelope from the safe and put it in the top drawer of her desk? I was working, with my back to her. Did you see anyone else around at the time? Only the uh, female indigenous person. She came down around that time. Did she go near Chris's office? I wouldn't know. I don't perv on her either. It wouldn't surprise me, though. Oh, why's that? Oh, you know, they're like anything that isn't tied down. Now, can I get on with it? I've got to be finished this coat by five. Thanks for your assistance, Mr. Blewett. Yes, I came downstairs round about then. So what? And what did you do? I didn't go anywhere near the office, and, and if anybody says anything different, they're lying. Uh, so where did you go? Straight here, OK? There's tea making stuff, right? So I made myself a cuppa. Then I sat down and drank it. Did anyone see you doing this? I don't know. Probably. Try and think back. It's important. OK, there was this big old guy with white hair in the bar rabbiting onto another old guy with a bit of a stoop. Mervyn, says. Could be. We'll check it out. Thanks, Kim. So I'm not under arrest? Oh, no, of course not. This is just routine. OK, Merv said she was in the dining room until Chris came back. It doesn't mean she didn't nick the money on the way there. What, with the chance of death spotting I don't think so. Face it, man. She's off the hook. Thank you. Uh, Kim, your alibi checks out. You're in the clear. I told you. Yeah, sorry about that. Just routine inquiries, you know? Yeah, yeah. So now you can relax and enjoy your stay in Mount Thomas. Sure. Uh, you might just get to meet the Tom Croydon you were looking for, too. Uh, we're about to give him a surprise presentation for the service medal he got today. Yeah? Yeah, he's kind of an institution around here. And begin, everybody. Everybody's here, including the guest of honour. So let's begin, eh? What's all this about? Well, this time is just a little something that your community of Mount Thomas and all your mates and your colleagues have got together in order to celebrate and honour your 30 years of being a cop. Come on, it's just a service medal. Yeah, well, except in your case, Tom, service means just that. And not only have you unstintingly for years worked through Rotary and the church and, and the community bank, but you've also been... The best and fairest cop that we could ever have hoped to have had. Oh, fair go. No, it's not yeah. true. <laughs> so, on behalf of everybody here, we'd like to give you a very small token of our appreciation. Thank you. Thanks very much. Um, I'm not sure what to say. Uh, I'm sure I don't deserve this. No, you don't. You bastard! You're a bloody child stealer and a life wrecker, and you don't deserve anything! <laughs> what sort of a community rewards someone for stealing babies from their family? What do you think you're doing? Because that's what he's bloody did! Me and my it. brothers are probably hundreds of others! Are you, are you aren't you bleeding? Oh no, I think I'm okay. Get off me, you pigs! Joe? Cuffs, please. Settle down. The quicker you calm down, the quicker you're out of here, all right? No, you can't do this! You can't leave me! 
be back in half an hour. Just calm down and take some deep breaths, all right? What are you doing? Jo, she's got to calm down. You're treating her like a criminal. Jo, what do you call assault with a weapon? She was just upset. She broke a bottle. Hey, Jo, you've been around long enough to know what damage those things can do. She wasn't threatening anyone with her, Jo. She's one of the stolen generation. The boss stole her from her family. And so she says. But the boss. I can't believe that's true. Is it true? Parish, I'm not a Nazi stormtrooper, nor am I the Pied Piper of Hamlin. I don't go around stealing children. She's got me confused with somebody else. Well, how come she recognised your name when she first heard it? I've no idea. Well, he has been in the district all his life. Yeah, but she's from the city and she called you a constable, which is what you would have been when she was Parish, a Parish, how many times do I have to tell yeah, so you... So are you saying that you've never taken any Aboriginal children from their homes? Not off my own bat, no. Then, as now, we occasionally assisted the welfare people to serve a court order. Well, there you go, then. Parish, I resent the implication no, could, that I, I am somehow to blame. Could I make a suggestion here? It would probably be really good to actually listen to this young woman's story and we might sort out some misunderstandings. Yeah, yeah, it's a good idea. Yeah, all right, as long as you stay. If you want me to. I'd be grateful. My family lived at a place called Lake's End Mission. Lake End. You know it then? My family had a dairy farm just up the road. Go on. There was Mum and Dad, my two brothers and me. I was the middle one. Bakers or Carters or Holloways? Our name was Cook. Do you want to hear this story or don't you? Yeah, you can go on. It was 1973. I was four years old. Me and my cousins were playing and suddenly they grabbed me and they had already taken my brothers. So who was it that came, Kim? The government, I suppose. And there were two cops, and you were one of them. I changed a bit. She said your name. It's all I remember of my mum. She had dark curly hair and blood in her face. She was trying to grab me back from you, and she was saying, You can't do this, Tom Croydon. Give me back my babies. But you took me anyway. I can still remember the smell of your uniform as you crushed me to your chest and bundled me into the back of a car. You were wet and slippery. You'd been playing in the shallows. I was afraid I might drop you. So you do remember? Yes. How could you do that? How could you just break up a happy family like that? Tom? You remember it as happy. That's not the way the welfare department saw it. Or us, for that matter. What would they know? Only the week before, we'd been called out to a domestic between your parents, Charlie and Elvira. The blood you remember on your mother's face. Charlie had attacked her with a broken bottle. No way. He was drunk, of course. She protected him, said she'd just slipped over. So we didn't... Well, we couldn't do anything. Then Welfare asked Sergeant Rice to assist them in serving a court order. They decided that you kids were neglected and in danger. No. I have to say, I agreed with them. The way I saw it, I was giving you kids a chance for a better life. A better life? Sure. Two kids' homes, six foster families, two sexual assaults, at least 12 schools, on the run from the welfare when I was 14, going on the game, Fantastic life. I couldn't have known. 
and at least I'm alive, which is more than I can say for Donnie and Spud. They're two brothers. One OD'd, the other one topped himself in prison. I'm sorry I hurt you. I didn't mean to. You happy with the treatment you've received by the police here today? Can I go now? Just sign here, thanks. How could you be so hard on her? Excuse me? Didn't you hear, Grace? Didn't you hear what she's been through all because of some dumb government policy? She was stolen from her own family. Not all of us had dream childhoods, Joe. But not all of us go around king hitting people and stealing money. She didn't steal the money, she's got an alibi. Listen, I don't know what the hell's going on, but I think that Kim is hiding someone in her room. I could hear someone there. By the time I got the key to check it out, there was no one there. Joe? Uh, OK. I don't get it, Joe. How does this mystery come? Uh, Kim! Um, is it possible to get a second towel? I wanted to wash my hair. Really? Uh, we were just wondering if we could have a quick look in your room. Why? Because I know you've got someone in there. Just because I asked for a second towel? You only booked a single. OK, I'll pay extra. Well, you actually haven't even paid anything yet. <gasps> Give me a break. I've been at the cop shop all if day. If you're to pay extra, does it mean you have got someone in your room? No, it just means I'm sick of being hassled. Right. Uh, Kim, now, about the money that was stolen from Ms Riley's office this afternoon. I was in the dining room. Oh, but your, your roommate wasn't. I just told yeah, you. Um, maybe it'd just be easier if we have a quick squiz in your room. Look, forget it, okay? I took the money. You satisfied now? So, Kim, you spotted the money on the way down the stairs? That's right. I thought I could just sort of borrow it. It's a drag having no cash. Then what happened? I just nipped in there and took it. Then I continued on to the dining room. And where was Miss Riley this time? Well, obviously, she wasn't there. But you could see the money? It was on the desk. Kim, how much money did you steal? About 40 bucks. You can count it if you like. I haven't spent any. If you drop the charges, I'll pay it all back. You'll be paying it back whether we charge you or not. She's confessed, Joan. Yeah, confession is a confession. But she's clearly lying. I mean, she doesn't even know how much money she's supposed to have stolen. Unless that's just a clever ploy to avoid paying back any more. Come on. Mind you, she would have required X-ray vision to actually see the money in the drawer. Exactly. What are you saying? We need to investigate this a bit further. So at this stage, you're free to go? For real? But we do think you're telling us porkies, Kim. Why would I do that? Don't know. Maybe you're protecting your mate. What mate? <laughs> he means this so-called mysterious guest in your room. There's no one there. So you keep saying. If you don't believe me, why don't you come and have a look? Uh, that probably won't be necessary. Thank you. I might just do that. Satisfied? Yeah, Paige. You could have warned them. There's no one here and you know it. Check under there, please. Uh, she's got a point. Then how about an apology for doubting my word? Don't push it. You understand. Please, Look what I found in the broom closet. Let me go, let me Where go. Where did you spring from, young lad? Mom! Leave him alone. Okay, mate. Well, looks like we just found our mystery guest. Okay, I'm sorry, I should have told you. Well, why didn't you? Some hotels are funny about kids. Well, I'm not. And anyway, the dollars are a bit tight, you know. I don't charge extra for children under 12. Well, I didn't know that, did I? See, honest mistake. No, well, she lied to us. Yeah, well, she's explained that. What else has she lied about? I mean, maybe the kids are accomplice. He's just a child. Hey, you talking to me or about me? Uh, both, actually, Kim. Now, did your son take the money? Get real. Take that as a no. Of course he didn't, and I didn't either. But you just said you did. 
Yeah, well, that was only so we wouldn't search your room and find her kid. Thank you, Constable. Now, listen, I've absolutely had enough of this. You've lied to me, you've lied to them. I want you out of here now. Oh, hey, 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 hang on, Chris, you can't do this. I mean, where are they going to go? Well, wherever they were headed to. But you know she's a bit short on cash. Well, I didn't stop her booking in here. What about a little boy, Jay? I mean, he's just a kid. I'm a sucker. A complete sucker. Thank you, Chris. You won't regret this. I promise. Okay? Good morning. This is 3SD, the voice of the Golden West. Well, thanks very much. What? They've gone. Cleared out completely. Oh, Kimberly J. The room's empty, car's gone. Maybe they wanted an early start. They haven't paid. I know a moonlight flip when I see one. And I hope you're not hungry. I am actually, I could eat a horse. Because they've taken the breakfast buffet with them. Don't even grudge them the food, you know. Neither do I, now. It's the fact that she conned me out of that room fair and I just fell for it, lost my purse, for God's sake. It's the second oldest one in the book. What's the oldest one? And the thing that makes me really mad is that it was my instinct to throw them out last night and I let you talk me out of it. How was I supposed to know they'd do a run? So now I am down $65 for the room fee, plus she's helped herself to everything that moved, blankets, towels, pillows. All right, Chris, could you make a list? What for? The crime report. Well, she doesn't want to charge it. Oh, yes, I do. It's a lot of effort to go to. I mean, no guarantee you'd even get the money back. No, but it'll make me feel a hell of a lot better, won't it? Maybe I could just pay for the room, at least you wouldn't be out of pocket. What about the blankets? <sighs> More money than sense. Yeah, well, it's my money. I can spend it how I like. Well, I'm a complete stranger just because she happens to be Aboriginal? How guilty is that, Jenna? Yeah, well, somebody ought to feel guilty. I'm just doing my bit for reconciliation. Now I'm making up for past police racism. I gather that snide remark is intended for me. You can't deny you're upholding a racist government policy, I boss. can, however, deny that I'm a racist, if that's what you're implying. I'm just saying... Yeah, thank you, Joe. Now, can someone please give me an update on the cash theft? Well, it wasn't Kim. How do you know? Well, she's withdrawn her confession. Joe, the woman couldn't lie straight in bed. Well, Chris isn't laying charges. Yeah, only because Miss Moneybags over here paid her off. It wasn't Kim, OK? All right, so what about the kid? How could it have been the kid? I mean, he was hidden in her room, for God's sake. How would he have even known about the money? So who stole it? Des blew it. It's got to be. I mean, he's the only one with the means and opportunity. Well, stop banging on about it and bring him in. Well, the sleaze bucket's still here. That's his you. Hey, spot the difference. New tyres. They were bald yesterday. How much do you reckon that'd set you back? Oh, pretty close to 600 bucks. Hmm. Not bad for a bloke who's not made of money. Yeah. Sign here. Yes, I'd be happy to accept the fact that you won the time money in a private bed. And sign here. I did win it. And sign here. But that does explain one envelope of which Chris Riley had carefully written. Tom's presentation was found scrunched up in a ball in that pig pen you call your ute. Someone else put it there. Tell it to the judge. Joe, Evan, highway service station, report of a theft. Right, on our way. Well, the kid couldn't get the toilet door open. He was obviously desperate to go, so I went to give him a hand. Right, so where was the mother? Filling up. We're self-served now. Anyway, um, by the time I've helped the kid with the door, she's gone. A drive off. Mm. Right, how much petrol? 42.34, plus a stack of lollies and some soft drinks, and maybe a carton of milk. No cash? No. OK, so what happened then? Well, I went looking for the kitty, didn't I? But he'd gone too, like the wind. Obviously headed down to a fine art. Could you give me a description of the woman and child? Dark. Dark hair, dark eyes. They're what my father called darkies. Aboriginal. Yeah. All right. Kim Cook in New South Wales. Bingo. Price? You better believe it. Larceny, shoplifting, good behaviour by more shoplifting, prostitution, community service order, three months. There's currently a warrant out for arrest. What for? Assault and kidnapping. She broke a woman's jaw. The woman who was fostering her son, Jay, who was made a ward of the state. 
She snatched the kid and ran. That's why she's hiding him. Scroll down and see what she was doing time for. There you go. Shoplifting. Does it say why they took the child away? Because she was using him as a decoy in her shoplifting racket. Just like she did today out of door ends. What sort of woman uses her own child to help her commit crime? We've contacted the informant in New South Wales, boss. He's very anxious to get her back. She's got herself into a lot of trouble. Point is, where is she? How would I know? What about the place that she came from, the Lake's End? Lake End. Do you think she could have gone back there? No, the Lake End mission ceased to exist years ago. There's a caravan park on the site now. It's run by a family uh, called Baker. Baker? Hmm. I knew a Harry Baker once. We were in Vietnam together. He came from Lake End Mission. He was a nice bloke. Turned out we were at infant school together in the little one-teacher school there. Maybe he's still there. Well, he wasn't in 73. He decided he liked the tropics and went up north. Might have come back. Maybe. Now, I doubt it. He would have been in touch. Joe Evan could ask for him. No, I'll go. Are you sure, boss? No, I'm not sure, Sergeant, but I'm going anyway. Morning. Morning. I was, um, looking for the manager. I'm the manager, also the owner. Oh, well, I'm, uh... Tom I'm... Croydon. There's a bit more of you, Tommy, but you haven't really changed that much. Were well, you here in 1973? I think it's 73. I'm talking about 1955, when you refused to sit next to me because you reckoned I smelt. Annie Holloway? Now I'm Annie Baker. Baker? Harry's widow. Well, Harry's dead. Oh, I'm sorry, I... Uh, I didn't know. Why would you? He's a great bloke. Why are you here, Tommy? Anyway, then, uh, she just drove off without paying and, uh, nobody's seen her since. It happens. Nice place you've got here. You, you, you've done a great job. Yeah, well, not bad for a mob of useless blackfellas, eh? I have never referred to your people in that So way. why are you telling me about this messed up woman? Well, it occurred to me that she might have headed in this direction. Are you trying to tell me she's Corey? Well, yes. And you reckon all blackfellas stick together? No, I don't. No, I have not seen her, Tommy. And even if I had, I don't know that I'd tell you. Is there anything else? Did you meet up with your army buddy? Uh, no. Yeah, but you spoke to someone out Harry, there. haven't you got any work to yeah, do? This is my work. I'm trying to find this suspect. Probably halfway back to Sydney by now. No. She stole mostly food and blankets. I reckon she's camping out somewhere. Not at Paradise Lakes, she's not. Well, if she's sticking around, maybe she's trying to find her family. Is there anywhere else you can think of, boss? There's a place at Picnic Point, uh, a couple of k's from the mission. It's got running water and toilets. People sometimes can't. All right, well, let's check that out. All 
All right, so it should be just down there. Kim's car. Where are they? Hey! Over there. Oh, oh. Unbelievable. Shh. Shh, yourself. I should just get him. Now you radio it in. I'll go and disable the car. But... Mount Thomas 309 to Mount Thomas 900. Yes, receive that, Paris. Hold your position and wait for DHS. What? Better to let them handle it. But we're here now. Parrish, don't argue. I don't want this woman caused any unnecessary distress. Is that clear? Clear as mud. Jay's gone. What's going on here? I know my rights. You've got to call Josh, the Aboriginal Police. Time, please. Boss. Sergeant? Kim's boy has gone missing. She knows where he is and we're trying to persuade her no to tell us. No way you bastards are ever getting your hands on my son. No way. Why is she still cuffed? Yeah, because she kicked me. You're stealing my baby. Take the cuffs off her now. It's not a police state. You heard him. Yes, you heard him. Watch it. Up the area. How far could he have gone? He'd know his way around the bush, wouldn't he? Except he's city bred. The point is, we've got to find him, and there's only a couple of daylight hours left. I got your message. Things not getting any better, hmm? <sighs> it's all turning into a nightmare. I'm not sure what to do. On the one hand, we have to find the kid because he's in physical danger out there. Yeah, and on the other, you don't want to repeat the sins of the past, do you? In 1973, I removed Kim from a situation of domestic violence. Within a year, both of her parents were dead. A motor vehicle accident, drunk driving. The body of Kim's mother was claimed by her sister, Annie Baker. Oh, Annie Baker. She's a formidable woman. She practically runs the church out at Lake End. I saw her today for the first time since we were kids. I completely funked it. I couldn't bring myself to tell her that Kim may be a relative, let alone and all the other stuff. Troubled conscience? I was just doing my job. So what now? You didn't tell me she was family. No, I didn't. Why didn't you tell me, Tommy? I, um... looked at the life that you'd made for yourself there and, uh... I realised I'd taken Kim away from that. Oh, I was ashamed. But you weren't ashamed back then? Aboriginal welfare people thought the kids might be neglected and in danger. I'd seen the conditions. I agreed with them. Back then, I thought we were doing the right thing. Charlie was stolen himself. He had nothing. Except those kids and a 
and the bottle. And then when the Gubbers took away the one thing he loved and had pride in, his kids, and he leant on the bottle even more. Well, what are we going to do about little Kimmy? She still hasn't said anything. Kim, could you come out here, please? I'd like you to meet your auntie. Annie Baker. Welcome home, Dort. <laughs> You're just like your mother, God rest her soul. Cry at the drop of a hat. Is she? Is she? Yes, Bubby. Her and your dad passed away a long time ago. You've got a little sister, Liddy, who will be so stoked to see you. A sister? Not to mention a mob of cousins and aunties and uncles. Yeah? I hear you've got a little bloke. Jay. He's ten. His dad's in jail. He's a great kid. Of course he is. Now, where is he? Jay, your mum's here now. Come out now, mate. Boss, we've been here for half an hour. If he's in there, he's not answering. Why don't you just go in there after him? So no one is going in there. If we go tramping in there, we're likely to pull the whole place down. Well, more reason to get the child out of there as quickly as possible. He's only going to come if his mother calls him. Go on, Bubby, call him. No, I can't. They'll put him in homes with people who hurt him and abuse him. I don't want that for my son. You don't have any choice. He's in real danger. No, he'll be all right. He's a good kid. Nothing bad will happen to him. I won't let it. What other options do we have? We'll search and rescue on their way. They'll shore up the tunnel, but it's going to take time. Gather the others around when you have got something to say that I think needs an audience. Yeah. Guys, over here. Kim, I'm, I'm not sure if this will help the present situation, but uh, I've got something I feel I have to say. I owe you a huge apology for taking you away from your family. I mean, I, I could say that uh, I didn't have any choice, that I was just doing my job, but that's... that's never strictly true. We always have some control over our actions. And if I'd made it my business to get to know my neighbours at Lake End Mission, then I might have chosen to act differently. But the fact is, I chose to ignore them. Unlike most people, I put them out of my mind and when the crunch came, it was too easy to misjudge them. Your poor parents. The government was wrong. I was wrong. For that, I am truly and sincerely sorry. And if I could do anything to give you back the life I stole from you, I would.
AJ, matey. You can come out now. It's okay, Mummy's here. I thought you'd never come. It's okay, JJ. Kim's been charged with a number of offences, including theft of petrol and food from the highway service station and uh, assault police. But for all these charges, she'll be released until the case has come to court. We've also notified the Aboriginal Legal Service. So we can go? Oh, not quite. Uh, see, the problem is the New South Wales charges. Uh, there's a warrant for Kim's arrest for grievous bodily harm and actual bodily harm. That's crap. <sighs> well, you broke a woman's jaw, Kim. They also wish to speak to you in relation to unlawfully removing a ward of the state which they classify as kidnapping. The uh, New South Wales informant is even now on his way down here to uh, extradite you to face those charges. He's requested that you be remanded in custody until he arrives. No. What about Jay? Of course, this is, after all, just a request from New South Wales. Don't tease the girl, Tommy. So, uh, after due consideration, I've decided to release you on your own undertaking. Good lad. Conditional that you stay with your auntie. And I have assured New South Wales that you will be here to be interviewed when they arrive. So I'm free? I'm not quite. You're facing some very serious charges and as it's not your first offence, you could still face a custodial sentence. What about Jay? Well, the good news is that it's now government policy to uh, foster Aboriginal children within their own families, if that's at all possible. So he can stay with you, Auntie? Until you come home, Dort. Great. Come on, I'd find you here. Told Chris you wouldn't be in the mood for the pub. Hardly. So I nominated myself to come down and give you your present. What present? A present from the community. Champagne was just a stopgap because the money was stolen. What money? The money that we all contributed. But since there's actually some hope of getting that money back, we decided we'd splurge on the original present anyway. So, what do you think? Well, it's... It's nice. It's very nice. Hmm. I'm not sure that I deserve it. Oh, Tom, look in there. What do you see? Well, you. <laughs> a silly old fart in need of a shave and a good night's sleep. Do you know what I see? I see a good and honest man with the courage to admit his mistakes and a heart big enough to forgive not just his enemies but also the people he may have wronged. I suspect you might be biased. <laughs> oh, hi, I'm Abby Tig. Okay, name? Kim Foster. Mm -hmm. And address? Melbourne. Thought I'd grab an early lunch, Chrissy. Righto, so long as you finish those stairs today, eh? Hey, Des, is that your ute out the back? Oh, it sure is. Yeah, well, the tyres could do with a transplant. Huh? The bit bald. That <laughs> mate, man's not made of money. Oh, well, just see what you can do, huh? I'd hate to put you off the road. Hey, listen, I found the perfect present, but I'm still 50 bucks short. Do you guys want to pass the hat around again? Yeah, no worries. It's only an extra 10 each. Great. Right. Would you get me? Not for you. You dealt with Tom Croydon. Constable Tom Croydon. Uh, senior sergeant now. Do you know him? Oh, not really. Do you want to come back with us, catch up with him? No, thanks. Kim Foster. Doesn't ring any bells. How old? Early 30s. An original Australian. She's trying to say Aboriginal. Uh, and she's looking for me. Oh, damn. Oh, uh, hang on. Here, here. Uh, Parish, do you mind? Yeah, what, well, we can't be looking grubby for your ceremony. It's only a service medal. It's no big deal. Hey, 30 years is nothing to be sneezed at, right? It's not as if I've done anything special. No, I've just hung around long enough. Uh, yes, Chris. He's going to be so surprised tonight. We're on our way. He says he's been assaulted. I have been assaulted. Well, look at me. What happened? Do you know? 
We were chatting away happily. I went out the back to get his sandwich. All hell broke loose and there's blood all over the floor. All right, so who hit you, Des? Bloody black bitch. And I want her charged. I'm the bloody victim here. I'm an injured man. I should be getting tea and sympathy. I already explained that, Mr. Blue. We've got to take a statement. PJ? Go for it. There I am, peacefully enjoying my lunchtime ale, waiting on my toasted sandwich, when all of a sudden the black bitch just up and king hits me for no reason whatsoever. Well, there must have been some reason. No, out of the blue. Chris Riley said that you were chatting with Ms. Foster. Oh, we might have passed the time of day. What'd you talk about? You know the trouble here, don't you? Those bloody abos can't hold their grog. One sip and they're troppo. Mate, I've been up north, pal. I could tell you stories. Yeah, I'm sure you could, Mr. Blewett. But let's just stick to the matter in hand, huh? Absolute and complete racist scumbag. <laughs> Not exactly your poster boy for reconciliation, no. I checked out your Kim Foster on leave. Clean as a whistle. Of course she is. I know exactly what happened. Oh, that's handy. Well, the guy's not only a racist scumbag and a liar, he's also a creepy sleaze bucket who can't keep his hands to himself. How do you know this? Because he tried it on me the other day. Didn't realise I was a copper. Were you wearing that red top? Anyway, I soon set him straight. But if it added some racist insult, I might have been tempted to smack him in the teeth as well. Well, just a suggestion. Maybe we should listen to the facts before we start handing out motivations. Sounds good to me. He suggested that we have sex, to put it nicely. When I said no, he called me something I'd rather not repeat. A racist insult? You bet. Were there any witnesses to this exchange? What do you reckon? Right, no witnesses. Look, I'm sorry I hit him now, OK? Every time I walk into a pub, some low-life gub like him thinks I'm easy meat. I can understand the frustration. Can you? Well, I mean, you've obviously had a frustrating day. Well, I'm sorry. I just saw Red. What's going to happen about this? Mr Blewett? You would be perfectly within your rights to charge Ms Foster with assault. Well, let's do it then. But have you considered that she might counter with an indecent assault charge? What? Or racial vilification? Could make for a very messy court case. Oh, hang on. Especially as I know for a fact there'd be other women prepared to come forward and give evidence about your inappropriate sexual advances. Oh, and this is about the other night, isn't it? How was I supposed to know you were a cop? Des, has it ever occurred to you that no women like that sort of behaviour? And if she can prove provocation, you might find the boot on the other foot. All right. I'm not stupid. I get the message. I'll drop the charges. Good. But don't think I don't know what's going on here. You're only looking after her because she's black, aren't you? Her skin colour is totally irrelevant. Oh, don't give me that. These days the bloody abos get away with murder. So there are no charges against you and you're totally free to go. Thanks. Perhaps uh, next time you see Red, just uh, count to ten first, eh? Yeah. And uh, stay at a desk blue away while you're at the pub. For sure. Uh, otherwise, uh, enjoy your stay in Mount Thomas.